Hey guys, Pseudotech here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to dive straight into the second episode of our Linux from Scratch series. This video is going to be kind of short compared to some of the other ones, but I'm going to make sure that you know how to compile every single package, and we're going to go over some basic things that you have to know before you get started. We're also going to compile Binutils, which is the first package that we have to set up before we get on with the rest of the operating system. To start out, we're going to go over the few things that you have to do every single time you start up your computer. Now, if you're like me and you have a virtual machine and you're just saving it, you won't have to do this, but just in case, I'm going to go over it again just to make sure you're all set up. First, export the LFS variable with export LFS equals slash mount slash LFS. As you can see in the video, I do echo, then the dollar sign LFS to make sure that it's set correctly. Finally, to set it up, we're going to mount our drives. You might have to go into pseudo mode for this, but it depends on your system. To do this, do mount dash v dash t ext4 then the path of your drive, which in my case is slash dev slash sdb, and then you can use the LFS variable, which is dollar sign $LFS, to just put it to the LFS directory. All right, let's get compiling. To do this, do su dash LFS to get to the LFS user. Enter your password and you should be good to go. Change to the source directory of your drive. This directory has all the different files that we downloaded in the last video, so we're going to unpack the details. To do this, we're going to do tar dash x v f the X is to extract, V to verbose so that we can see all of it happening, and then finally F is to tell which file it's going to use. So tar dash X V F, and then bin utils, you should be able to autocomplete it to get your correct version number. Type enter, and you should see a long string of things going across. That indicates that you have unpacked your package. Bin utils requires a separate directory for compiling the package, so we're going to go ahead and create that with make dir dash V build, and then we're going to change to that directory. We're also going to prepare Binutils for compilation by setting different routes to our drive so that it doesn't actually install on our system, but on the Linux from scratch system. All of these commands you can find in the LFS book, and they're kind of long, so just go ahead and copy and paste it into your terminal. Finally, we're going to use the make command to actually build the package. It's important to figure out how much time it's going to take you to build Binutils because we're going to use that to figure out how long it's going to take to build other ones. Especially with the big packages, it can take a very long time to make the entire package onto your system. As you probably noticed if you're looking at the book, there's an approximate time to build things, and it's measured in SBUs. Measure how much time it's going to take you to build binutils, and then multiply that by how many SBUs any package takes. So for example, binutils takes one SBU, meaning that it obviously takes the same amount of time. GCC takes 8.3 SBUs, so if it took you 2 minutes to build binutils, then it'll take you just over 16 minutes to build GCC. Just something nice to keep in mind. If you're building on a 64-bit system, make sure you check out the symbolic link that you have to create in the book to make sure that it's all set up. Next, we can do make install to finish off the process. At this point, you're going to kind of scan through all of your make messages to make sure there aren't any errors. If there are errors, then it can be a real issue in the future. If you do get errors, make sure that you have some host system requirements, did everything that I did in the past video, which was the first video, and make sure that you're doing all the commands correctly. You can try it again the same way as Stevie did before, and I'm going to go through that again, but with a slightly different setting that should make it a little bit faster. As you can see, I'm going through the process again. We don't have to re-extract, but I'm going to go to the build directory, prepare for installation, and this is where I'm going to switch things up just to show you a different way. Use make, but this time use dash j, and then the number of cords your computer has. In my case, this is 4 since I have an Intel i5. This is going to significantly decrease the time which it takes for you to compile any package. This is pretty nice. As you can see, it took me about a third of the time that it took me originally, only using one core. This is completely optional, and it can sometimes create errors, and it makes the SPUs a little bit less accurate, but it's up to you. It might be worth the extra speed. Go through, create it again, and this time check for more errors. If you don't get any, you're good to go, and you're ready to head on to the next video. Speaking of which, I think it's about time that I ended this video. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below on the Pseudotech website at pseudotech.ml. In the next video, we're going to go into more compilation, including GCC and some other packages. Let me know how much you want me to go through in one video. But that's about it for today. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.